You know they got that same name with different point of views. Whichever one you choose, uh uh-uh, uh, you can't lose. They got that uh, same name, different point of views. Whichever one you choose, uh uh-uh, uh, you can't lose. We gon' laugh, have a good time, just sit back and fade your mind. Welcome back. It's City Keisha and Country Keisha, episode number two. Hello, everyone. We got some awesome feedback last week, and yes, we, we can't did. we can't wait to tell you guys Cannot what we heard. Not wait. <laughs> okay, okay. So let me let's start off with. Um, I'm gonna tell you now. I heard from so many guys about this twenty seconds and twenty minutes. I tried to told her. See, oh, I was in the future uh, speaking to you because you wasn't listening to me in the present. Because, see, that's what you do. You run that mouth in the present, but you don't think about it. I tried to told you. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to say this. Guys, y'all don't have a clue. It takes more than 20 seconds for women. Oh, Keisha, not every woman. Not every woman, but I can speak for this woman. Okay, let's go ahead. Finish with the 20 seconds and the 20 minutes. We're going to uh, keep going. What else are we going to recap on, City Keisha? I have no recaps. Oh, you don't? No. Did I oh, have one? I, got, I, heard, I heard from someone that yeah. said that they really enjoyed the fact that we talked about speaking to our kids oh, and listening to okay. them. okay. Well, you know, when I did hear a comment that said that I wasn't being real, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to mention any names, but I'm about as real as it gets. Anybody who know me know that, that about me. Now, I may not be uh, as country as the person who made that comment, but I am for sure real. That's all right, City Keisha. You mm. real. I can touch you. Mm. You real. But you faker than a $3 bill. <laughs> you a lie. And the truth ain't never been in you. All right. Um, so, yeah, if it ain't about me, let's key key. So let's, let's. let's go back. So um, I'm glad that people enjoyed the part about the children because it was very important. I think that we need to be able to understand um, just communicating with our kids. That's so, so, so important. And, I mean, I have two that I raised that's a definitely a byproduct of that, and I just want to cur- encourage other parents. Well, I did hear something else that we sounded very educated. Well, and guess we are. what? We are Girl, black women. Black what? B A E. Black <laughs> and educated. What? Right. I mean, we got we high bae. degrees, right? We bae. Yeah. We both got masters. We yeah. got masters. So we got to put do it down on the table. We let our reputation speak for itself. All right. So let's get started. What you know, no good. What you know, no good. Good. What you know, no good. Mm-hmm. So we're going to start with politics. You ready? Contra, ooh, Keisha. Ooh, child. I don't know what's going on in that White House, but I think oh. it's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> you always got to go in on Trump. What is what? that? You? Did you hear the fire trucks? <laughs> I thought I heard fire trucks. Let me tell you something. My pastor said on, on Wednesday night, you know, some people do good and go, go to church. Win- yes, I go to church <laughs> and I go to Bible study. Praise <laughs> the Lord. He said that, you know what, we have survived all kind of stuff, and we're going to survive Trump. So, yes, Robert Cohen, Trump's personal lawyer, y'all, attorney. guess what? what? He got raided. Who? By who? The FBI? Yes, he did. And then tried to say, client client attorney privilege. Well, guess (laughs) what, buddy? They have a group. I learned this. I learned this, Keisha. You hear me? They got a group called the Taint Group. All right. They go in and they look at all the information that they have in question and they separate those things that would deem to be unlawful based on attorney client privilege and those things that are important. But one thing you got to know, there is no attorney client privilege when you and your attorney both are crooked. Oh, stop right now. You preach it, girl. Let me high five you right here. Let's get, let's educate these people. All right. Also, this warrant had to go through so many people, and they were all Republicans. Not one Democrat had to see this. All of the Republicans said that there was valid reason for a warrant. Well, mm. and the thing about it is, for somebody to I smell to, smoke. Well, <laughs> something on fire. Well, you already <laughs> said what? What's the? What was the? The reporter or something that was talking to him. Oh, his... April. Uh-huh. Let's let me make sure I got it right. Okay. April. Let's talk about it. When when should we expect him to sit down? <laughs> Somebody step down. 
April Ryan. April Ryan, the urban reporter from CNN. Okay, urban reporter. Is that you what know, you said? Well, stop, so stop, stop, because you know I'm country. Don't start that mess. No, 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 urban. I'm not, no, I'm saying, is it urban because she is black? Oh, oh, she's very black. Oh, American. this is <laughs> That's what I'm saying. See, she stays in her feelings all the time. But she is feelings. black. So she asked Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Uh-huh. Girl, I said her name. I didn't want to say it. She asked her, did Trump consider stepping down? Sarah uh-huh. Huckabee uh-huh. Sanders said uh-huh. that was a ridiculous question. Oh, and no. Oh, did you find it ridiculous, Sidney Keisha? Well, <laughs> I say this. We have, and this is, you know, my honest opinion is this. I had, a dis- I am, I had a discussion with a colleague of mine, and she got upset with me because I made the comment that he was her president instead of saying. <laughs> Our president. And I had to take a second and, and think about that because I did not want to offend her. But at the same time, I found myself finding very difficult to wrap my head around somebody who, if they were a regular Joe Schmo, would not have been my friend, uh, would not be somebody I would respect, would not be someone who I would admire, want to be my mentor, or someone who I would want my son to even know. So when I think about a lot of the things that he has done, mm. um, I have mm. no heaven or hell to put him in. Mm. But one thing I do have is my own opinion. And every time I felt like I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt mm. and to be a good Christian and say, hey, all is forgiven, he will do something else. So I think um, just like my Angelo said, just like a lot of older, wiser people have said, when someone show you, who they yeah. are. Believe them. The first time. Believe them. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the recap from last week. I feel like we got massa. I, I never knew what it was like to be a slave, but I'm, I think we're starting to have some um, deja vu here with um, 45. <sighs> Let's move on. All right. <laughs> here we go. Something else in politics. This happened a while ago, but it was Tucker Carlson. And he mm. said, America ended slavery, and maybe we should get some credit for that. What do you think? I mean, they did. But the statement is uh, not uh, incorrect. Uh, 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 wait a okay, minute. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm from the country. Uh-huh. Slavery ended, but did Jim Crow end? Did all the other laws that they put in place to keep you down end? No. Good point. But he didn't say that. He just mentioned slavery. And America didn't end slavery, not the South. If you see how proud they are in being Confederates? Wait now, America did because we had a president, let me finish, we had a president who emancipates the proclamation. Okay? Juneteenth, we celebrate that. He ended slavery. So I think he's taking that out of context because it is true but he's trying to um, get credit for something to justify more wrong. And that's the part that makes it... You, you uh, shake your head. You, no, no, no. I'm shaking my head because Abraham Lincoln, uh-huh. the Emancipation Proclamation, mm-hmm. but the country split in half. Okay. The country fought each other. So America fought to keep slavery and America fought to end slavery. And, and they lost. And, and they lost. The but, if they, but it was but, a fight. Right. It wasn't like, oh, we want to end slavery but and I, it happened. But we <laughs> have talked about this and I said that we there were laws that ended slavery, but slavery didn't end where? It didn't end in the South. No, I know no, no, no. In people's minds. Mind. Well, and period. It's, and well, it, that's what makes that's what keeps it alive. When you know what I'm saying? It's almost like if you have ever been in a relationship and someone has done something. Well, we all have, but someone's done something bad to you, and you really love them and want to forgive all, them. Uh, uh, I ain't never did nothing. You really love them and you want to forgive them, but and you do, you know. And I think it takes a lot of God to forgive some stuff that happens in relationship. But but the thing is, is that if in your mind you think that they're out doing something, they could truly not be doing anything it's at all. I mean, seriously. No, I'm just saying that. <laughs> okay, all right. So I'm saying they could not be doing anything, but in your mind you feel that they are. So your relationship is going to be affected in a negative way because I don't want to change my mind. So until people start to actually change their mind, Slavery did not end, even though America put it in writing and said it no more. Well, I'm from the South and in the country. 
I can tell you this, education plays a big part of that. Where I'm from, you still have white people that believe that blacks are inferior. Well, and, and you go, what? And it's because they stay in their bubble. They don't interact with any other black people. The only black people they know were slaves or they thought were descendants of slaves. They don't think that you can evolve. So you have to do better and show them that, hey, I'm a person that's different. We all get stereotyped just from my skin color. And look at President Barack Obama. He just snatched that veil of all that ugliness that they've been hiding. It came out and it showed us that we still have people that think that we're inferior just because of our skin color. They don't know anything else about you and they think you're inferior. Well, and, and that's the thing. And I think, you know, we know that we are one country that judge people on their skin. I mean, most of the time it's economic status. OK, mm. um, but in America, that's one thing we do. So we fight economic status. We fight skin color. We fight sexism. We fight, you know, it's just and everything. Me and you hit all three of those. Yeah, we do. We're we women. hit all three. We're black. OK, we're not po. Well, we, we po. No, we're not. We ain't Trump rich. I could, and, and because <laughs> I'm an accountant, everybody that's under the one percent is po. OK, I know y'all. We think we got money. But and, and I'm gonna say it like Oprah said, it's some rich people and then there's some wealthy people, generational wealth that gets spread down and down. Okay. So and we, we and well that ties there. into slavery because yes. I think that we that put we, us at a disadvantage yes. off the jump. Yeah. We 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 got you know how you have when a, when they're doing a race and you get a uh what is that called where you have to wait behind a block until Yes, yeah, I don't know what it's called. Yeah, yes. some type of violation. And so we we waited behind a block for a hundred years. <laughs> oh, five hundred. But it, but the thing about us though, uh-huh. even though we were behind the block, yeah, we are some resilient people. We are. I mean, I look up and I was like, How did we do this? Yeah. Shout out. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, white people look and say, how they did that? <laughs> <laughs> I had a thing about when Bush was president, <laughs> that um, he would, when Bush was president, we, it was hard times. And I was like, white people can't take this. We used to it. I know how to. I knew how to work right, around. Last week, money. what you tell me in the country, we ain't going hungry. We ain't all going hungry. I plant some maters. Plant some maters. Now, black women, I got to say this. Thank you, black women, for stepping up, for saving this country. Woo-woo. We voted against Trump. Yes. We voted against Roy Moore in Alabama. Yes. And I'm sitting here going, we're going to have to come and start running for offices because you need us. Well, wait a minute now. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said that because yes. 500 African-American women are currently going to run for office in 2018. Go ahead, girl. Do you hear me? Black Five, girl magic. Wait, one, well, not what? 100. Not 200. Not three. What? Not four. four. Uh-uh. Not 500. 500. Black girl magic. What? Black I wish girl. they all have froze. Black <laughs> <laughs> well, And we dashikis. All, yeah, we all come in different shapes and sizes. And speaking of black women, let's Uh-oh. talk about this House of Representative from Florida, that chick, Kimberly Daniel. <laughs> cuckoo. I wish I had a cuckoo sound, because she is. She Rip. says that if it wasn't for slavery, she might be somewhere in Africa worshiping a tree. What is wrong with you, Kim? I'm going to tell you what I think. She didn't watch Black Panther. Did she not Ooh. see what would Wakanda happen for, if, oh, if... I, I if, got my arms crossed. Okay, Wakanda good. Forever. Wakanda forever. Did she not see what would happen if we weren't colonized and stripped of our culture and traditions? We could have been well advanced. Hey, Kim, you need to first come back and apologize for that statement. She really should. If you are a house of representative, that word representative means that you represent some people that you have truly offended. And if you think, and then they said she is like a strong religious, and I'm not saying Christian, I'm just going to say religious views on things. I'm going, come on, Cam, with the 500 women that's about to run, let's, it always got to be one. But that's all right. You know what I Good. say? Vote her out. Goodbye. Thank you for letting us know how you feel. You will not be getting my vote. We live well in America. In Florida. Oh, oh, my We bad. live in Florida. In Florida where you she didn't get my vote. Did you vote last time? Oh, every time. You okay. know. Don't she <laughs> play with me? She know I vote. You know I am a straight fool about voting. It is my civil right. It is a democracy, and I'm going to exercise it every time they have a poll. I don't care if we vote on what color underwear you need to wear. I'm voting. 
uh, Keisha was out there <laughs> running Cavison. for, Cavison for people to vote. <laughs> and she was like, I told her, I said, you have got to be the most Black Pantherist chick ever. But you know what, y'all? She won't take MLK Day off. That's right. <laughs> because let me tell you what Martin Luther King told oh, me. Oh, God. He told me. <laughs> he told you, you nothing. Martin Luther King told me, see, look, this is the spirit. <laughs> so y'all don't understand the spirit. Martin Luther King told me. Personally. You, I'm not paying your bills, fool. Oh, oh, you okay. better go to work. Uh, and okay. let guess what? All the days that ain't Martin Luther King, what are you doing? But listen. What are you doing on those listen, days? She took a day off the next week. Because <laughs> I it, it was a storm, a brewing. A Martin Luther King said, Martin Luther King said, it's a storm of brewing. Oh, Jesus. You might need to stay under the covers. You know, I gave her much mad, and mad I, shade was, on that. Like, that, I was like, what? Which, which is, if it was good, I could take it because my my struggle with our people is not a one-day struggle. Okay. I mean, but you still, I, I feel like anytime you, and this is the turning part of that, anytime you have an opportunity to show unity. You should. That's where I struggle is. I struggle will always be that. In organizations, you know, we're part of tons of organizations, including our sorority. Hey. In families, on jobs, at churches, you know, a lot of times, I mean, and, and that's what they even say in the Bible, you know, with when our people will perish without a purpose, without value. When, when you're not standing for something and you're coming together and being as one, unity, I mean, that just, it fight, it, it keeps us in the fight. Well, on the unity, I'm going to go on back to Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and you also got to feed your family. Oh, Jesus. I had a day to go. Let's move on to pop culture. <laughs> What's up, Khloe Kardashian? Had a baby. Wah, wah. Tristan Thompson oh, had God. three, four babies. Oh, and Lord. I mean bays. Oh, <laughs> I'm just going to say karma is a bitch. What you mean? As Chloe. What you mean? What Chloe do? Oh, Chloe ain't do nothing except when he had a woman that was pregnant and get ready to have her baby. She was dating. Oh. And I think they overlap. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Ooh, what goes around? Karma's a bitch. Come around. Okay, come around. All right. Well, Chloe, I, she has not named her child, but I will hope that she doesn't have the spirit of her brother-in-law on her and have that baby out here with some name like I, I can't Chicago. Even, oh, okay. where you from, City Keisha? <laughs> Shut <Shot> town, <laughs> stand up. <laughs> Speaking about relationships, um, Lala and Carmelo. Well, hold on. Can I oh, tell okay. Chloe? Um, congratulations on the new addition to your family. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Lala um, and Carmelo is having a bad relationship situation going on right now. They mm. said that he is, may have a stripper pregnant. Well, mm. <laughs> well have they ever heard of Wrap It Up? What are they doing? I mean, in this day and age of STDs, yeah. why are you in a stripper? Yeah. Well, Love and Hip Hop, the dude, what's his name? He had the same thing. Yeah, um, it's just, it, it, hey, you, don't be talking about Stevie J. Not don't Stevie be, J. Oh, I'm about to say, please don't uh, say Stevie. Kurt, girl, Kurt. <laughs> but I tell you that Rashida love hustle Kurt, baby. He better be glad it, she it hanging takes that love. Way. It takes mm-hmm. love, and, I, and I'm gonna tell you, I ain't never been in love like that. Oh, <laughs> I let you say you ain't been in love like I've been in love. <laughs> you ain't felt like I felt. Wah, ah, 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 and I ain't, I, I, I ain't lost not one. I ain't lost no not one minute of sleep either. <laughs> but all I hot and so okay, and no DNA test is over here. I don't oh, care how many babies Lord, you have. Jesus. Go ahead, but that's love. Let them have they love. Well, Cardi B and Offset are having a baby too. Go Cardi B. <laughs> Offset, that's your man's name. You look, when you start having okay, babies, so I'm going to need you to go back. That baby name ain't going to be Cardi no, no. B and all yes, that. What are we looking at right now? I know, but listen, if you're going to start having babies, you, we need to go back to your government name. You can't be having babies with names like Offset <laughs> and ASAP. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. That's out in the country. I know we got Bubble, Snail, Rat. You know, we got names <laughs> like that. Did you <laughs> say but, Snail and Rat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pookie Nail. <laughs> Well, you have names like that. I mean, well, we still have city, babies. You got to scratch them names. You, scratch names. you can't be having names by by somebody named. Well, know. that's something city and country probably got in common because you know I got Uncle May May. You know what I'm saying? Yes, <laughs> I got you know. And so we do, and that's so weird. Like I, I will not talk to people, the peach people. They always say to me, they be like, "Is that your?" Because you know we use the cousin 
very loosely. So yes. when you were part of our love and our family, we'll call you cuz. And then it took me forever to know some of my cuz's real name because, I mean. Girl, Facebook messed me up. <laughs> These people coming out there with their government name. Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg was on been on in, in front of the um Oh and don't Mark look like he just he weird looking. Listen, the part the part that upsets me and we talked about the other night is about your privacy. Stop telling all your stuff on Facebook. Why are you giving us your full name? See the Keisha. Um, <laughs> let me tell you something. <laughs> He shared I, all your data. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I've been getting them calls. Yes, yes. Just too trusting. But I'm going to tell you this. With the names on Facebook, some people come out there with their government. I had, who is this? Who is this? You know, that's Pookie from down the street. Pookie from down the street name is Vernon. <laughs> Speaking of nicknames, Snoop Dogg is singing gospel. Ouch. What? I think that's pretty cool. I didn't say nothing wrong with it. You know what? I think that's actually a very good transition for him because he's getting, he's our age. That man be 50. How about he go home? He can't be 50 still up in there like doing the crib walk. Come you, on. I, and, and, and this is the thing. I'm going to say this that I learned in church mm-hmm. and uh, when I was going to church. Uh-huh. Let me tell you what I learned. <laughs> God needs you when you in your youth. Shut up, ah! Jesus. <laughs> Yeah. You don't wait till when you're old was... and tired. <laughs> no. Now you want to give your life to God? Come on, man. Hold, hold on now. There ain't nothing wrong with it. But no, I'm just no. saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He, he could have given his life to God way before now. I know, I know. I'm okay. just, I'm just right. saying. Don't you give me started I'm just with saying, you. Don't, don't give you God, do it. I'm just going to say, don't give God your worst. Now, when you a- I'm saying when you able-bodied. When you able-bodied. Okay. So what does it mean by giving body. God your best? Does that mean going to church? No. No. See, that means taking care of your fellow man because God said love each other. Love, hey, we fellowshipping right now. Where one or two gather, I'll be in your midst. I know I got that scripture. Even the sinners know the scripture. You better tell it. The (laughs) devil is alive. I'm going to tell you. New subject, Keisha. New subject. Bill Cosby is back in the news. His daughter just passed away. A moment of silence. Let's respect the dead. All right, now, Bill. You can't, this lady say, Bill was slipping everybody make it. Can you imagine, like, it's like being in a room thinking you're like, Bill Cosby, he's the pudding guy. He comes from the Bill Cosby hey, show. Hey, hey. And the fat hey, Albert, and hey, he's hey, sitting hey. there, he's like, hey, hey, slip, 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 and you're drinking. And the next thing you know, you wake up and hey, 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 it's on top of you. He Cliff Huxtable. Oh. Well, let me say this, and I have to say this for our people. I love black men. I love black men. I respect black men. But when one is wrong, we cannot can we cannot condone anything that's wrong. I don't care who it was. And Bill Cosby, if fifty women have accused you, I'm not all fifty ain't lying. All fifty ain't well, lying. Well that's all I'ma say. But let's go back to the slipping of the Mickeys, cause um okay. we had the girl on Facebook who uh-huh. was doing the video. Well, Facebook Live. Okay. And you see the guy slip the the um spike her drink. Mm. And um come on, Keisha, tell us what we need to tell these young girls about partying and being very safe. You can party, but party safely. Well, Keisha, you gotta understand something. I mean I everybody's understand. chasing something. And mm-hmm. these millennials they're, they're very trusting. They're very open. Everybody's sharing. People, you know, they believe it's no big deal for you. You know, it's almost like going, taking the hippies and kind of updating them. They, they love smoking weed. And, and, and I say that because, honestly, working in the high school, I hear that a lot. It's like, what's the big deal? You know, and I think about the 60s when everybody was popping pills and doing all that kind of stuff. And so they go to these parties and they do this stuff and they think it's funny. No, no, no. I think you're missing the point. What point? The point is she didn't know he put it in her drink. We're I, talking about people slipping stuff in your drink, not the fact that you're partying and you want to take something. We're talking about somebody violating you, and well, you need to be safe about that. How do you protect yourself? If you want to slip something in your drink and drink it, that's you. But if somebody is putting you out of your frame of mind to make b- good decisions so they can do things to you, now we got a problem. 
And I, I I agree with that. I think, you know, I party. I partied. I party. I party. Um, I knew where every I where to go. I was in church. Really? Mm-hmm. And I was I was in there with the Bible and knew. I was having Bible. I knew standing. where to go every day of the week. If Mama, Monday, you hear me? Mama, I girl, was I was <laughs> Mama, I was studying. Keisha and Cindy Keisha were partying. I'm talking about after college, Negro. After college I had a baby. <laughs> oh yeah, see, you were doing a little too much partying. Um, but I was out in the clubs, and I would hang out, and I would be with my friends. And I probably, um, I wasn't really a big drinker. I didn't like getting drunk and and being in a situation where I could not control, you know, my thoughts of what was going on. I was very particular about that. And then just a lady, I was classy, you know what I'm saying. So all that now, if I'm with my girlfriends or with my guy friend and or my boyfriend or whatever, and we at somebody's house and I get toe up. That has happened a couple of times, especially in college. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, nah, I'm yeah, not trying to. Me. Yeah, I'm not trying to do all that other stuff. I was always pretty leery of. And you know what? We were talking about that. You know what I don't like? Even when I was dating, I don't like corny dudes. Anyway, corn, let's straight go back corn. To the- no, really, like you know what I'm saying. And those are probably the ones slipping the Mickey's in people's it drinks. Are the ones some damn corn balls. They might be, but I'm gonna tell you this. Oh. I I party, but I was a dancer. I wasn't a drinker, so I danced all over them floors, and I, I didn't drink anybody's drink. But for the young girls, we need to tell them, young girls, cover your drinks. Don't If you walk away, it's no good. You need a new one. But protect yourselves. We need to, we need to create you dances yourself. with your drink in your hand. Like, um, dancing with your drink in your hand. We say we dance with your drink in your hand. Hey, Girl, I throw that drink to the side and what? Because you ghetto. Because I got the twerk, 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 twerk. No, you ain't got no butt to twerk. <laughs> no. <laughs> you be, tw- you be, tw- you, you can't get the irking part out. You be, tw- okay, yeah. my bad. <laughs> I love that you. That low down. You mean it. All right, all right. Do Two, you mean it? Let's move on. I do mean it. <laughs> okay. She be acting like she my man. So I be like, what is wrong with you? I am. Okay, stop it. <laughs> to be or not to be. The topic of the week. What? Should women teach their daughters to be more vocal about sex? Yeah. Absolutely. Now, this is something we're going to agree on. Okay. Can you but, imagine But that? we don't think we agree on it. I don't think we agree on how you tell them. What? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you think? I think masturbation should be the first thing you tell them. The question. <laughs> you said sex. I said by yourself. <laughs> the question was, should women teach their daughters to be more vocal about sex? Yeah. We, 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 how do we get to ma- why do Because we- you need to masturbate to know oh, what you want. Oh, Lord Jesus. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> how you going to have sex and you don't know what you want? We mm. talking about for girls who are trying to figure out what they like. Well, okay, so, so I will, I will say yourself. this though. No, I will say this. Thank I you. think growing up, especially with with black women, you mm-hmm. know, there's a lot of things sexually that you know it's never really been accepted, and so we 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 don't get that talk, and our, and our moms don't tell us that it feel good and that it's okay to give a blowjob or you know or certain things that you do. Like I you don't think- do that, mama. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I mean, anyway, no, but, no, I'm not saying tell say, your daughter to give a blowjob. I'm just saying whatever. Hey, you, she can't get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> but I was gonna say seriously, <laughs> is that, help me right now. We talked to a group of women about this and about teaching their daughters, and one of the things that they said to us mm-hmm. is that it's uncomfortable. But I'd rather be uncomfortable than to be somebody grandmama or to have my baby with some type of STD that ruin their reproductive organs and i agree with that and i also think that instead of always talking about oh getting pregnant and doing this stuff you know because i think you do need to have those conversations about protecting yourself and how to protect the sex but to let them know it it feels good it feels good and you should if you're doing it right hold on some people ain't doing it right oh god that's why you need to tell your daughter so they when they feel bad and the guy be like but i'm doing it right no you're not doing it right my mama said that ain't how it's supposed to be (laughs) (laughs) I'm just saying that, you know, to have those conversations, to be able to to not feel embarrassed, to have that conversation with somebody who you're intimate with, preferably your husband. But, I mean, you know, whatever. 
Girl, shit up. Okay. <laughs> but I'm just saying that it, it needs to be a situation where women and, 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 and moms should have those conversations. When you talk about having getting your cycle for the first time, when you talk about hygiene and making sure, you know, any place that grow hair, you need to be washing it three, four times before you get out the shower. Those type of things that you start having right around sixth, seventh, eighth grade. By the time they're getting ready to, you know, get into high school and get out of high school, you need to be having those conversations with them. Well, and one of the things that we discuss is to start early. If you start having the sex talk earlier, it gets easier. Mm-hmm. And it, you, so you don't just jump out of there one day when they're like 12 and you want to talk about sex and they're like, who is this weird woman mm-hmm. who wants to talk about sex? So you yeah. start early and it's well, age it's appropriate. Relationships it's too. age appropriate uh-huh. for girls. Mm-hmm. You talk to them about their private parts and mm-hmm. then you, you get to the point where you get to this actual sex talk and then you talk to them about respecting yourselves. I think we got a taboo thing in our black community mm-hmm. of um, if you are vocal about what you like, then then you're a slut or a hoe. Or a hoe. Mm-hmm. And that's And that's not the case. Mm-mm. And I think probably because, segueing into the next thing, don't allow Instagram, dear daughter, <laughs> dear, dear daughter-in-law, don't allow Instagram, the Instagram vixen, to dictate your relationship choices. Um, mm-hmm. Nice guys shouldn't finish last. Well, that's true. And I, I have this thing that I tell my boys, and I think, now I tell my boys, so I'm going to, let's share it for the girls as well. Instagram, Facebook, music, all of that stuff is for entertainment purposes only. It's not real. But life. that's their life. Like to say no, that. But I'm saying no, for, you can't. The reason why I say that to you is because we're sitting from a perspective of a forty-something-year-old. Okay, and so yes, just like right now, and and this is something that a lot of parents need to understand with young adults or with teenagers between sixteen and twenty-two. The last part to develop in your brain is your frontal lobe. And that is what controls your learning and decision making. So when kids are like, I don't know, I don't know, or they'll make a choice and don't look at the long range consequences Mm -hmm. of it, it's because of that instant gratification. So these people who created the social media knew that. They knew the research. So those little dings they get when they, you know, when somebody likes their page or when they put the videos up and people doing all this kind of stuff, they knew what would trap them. And it's like crap to these kids. So what do you do? And uh, that goes back to what I said that I tell my kids. This is entertainment. You have to explain to kids because that frontal lobe isn't developed. This is not real life. This is entertainment. When you see these women with these perfect bodies, you don't know how much Photoshop, how much filtering has happened. So you have to separate what's out there from real life. You have to separate the Instagram celebrities from real celebrities. Mm -hmm. You have to separate celebrities from real people. So this thing of we are, we we're teaching them that it's the norm to look flawed skin and perfect body, big booties and big, everybody ain't shaped like that. Look at me. I'm fine as hell. (laughs) Hey, when your front is bigger than your back, (laughs) when your stomach stick out further than your booty do, (laughs) that's a booty do. But that's, but this is the thing you're, you're living in the real world. You pick up your phone or your, whatever you're picking up devices. That's not the real world. Anybody can be anything they want to be on social media. Mm-hmm. I, I'm beautiful on social media. I mean, I'm supermodel, fine. I mean, all right, gorgeous. and we're gonna move on. <laughs> In our Hey Black Child segment, we're gonna talk about the um, Shirley Chisholm effect. And all we right, kind of let's on talk this about second, it. But it's the black woman in politics and Stacey Adams. Who Come I would on, love Stacey. for her to send us uh, a little. Maybe we'll forward this to her. But um, she's running for governor of Georgia be the first black female to do it and with the way females are coming to the polls she just might make it happen Georgia need it I'm sorry we, Georgia got hot Atlanta and we still in Bama, Georgia I is know you're not still, about Georgia no, you uh, no, no I'm better. saying Georgia need the first black female governor uh-huh. because we're still in the south and we, we got hot Atlanta where a lot of black folks is we need we need to get out and vote let's get Stacey, Stacey Adams out there okay. let's get her all right, here Come we go. Come on, people. <laughs> All right, so we're going to let you talk about your financial piece. All right. Before we Come. get out of here. Oh, you ready? my goodness. Yes, we're going to talk about putting the numbers okay, first, down. First, a little recap on your uh, Starbucks. Oh, thing. my God. For the, <laughs> I, got, I got so much heat about this Starbucks. Hey, if you can afford Starbucks, buy it. That, do that solve everybody's problem? 
If you can't and you're trying to figure out where to save money, look at your finances and see where you can cut. If you don't need a Starbucks coffee and you can save some money on Starbucks, and I was only using Starbucks as a metaphor. Oh, look at you. As a metaphor. Well, with my degree. Language. With my degree. All right, go ahead, girl. <laughs> Degrees. I got to put an S oh, on okay, that. Okay, yeah. Okay, so this is the thing. I need everyone to be proactive in your finances. Put it in concrete. Writing or put it in a spreadsheet. Look at the numbers. Don't be afraid of the numbers. We're always afraid I'm, of the numbers. I'm, 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 hold on. I'm, I'm scared. Afraid, I'm afraid of the numbers. I know it. Ooh, Ooh, I'm use afraid a spending of the machine over here. And see, you're supposed to be... My- Okay. You need to know where you stand financially in order for you to figure out what you can do. Income minus expenses. Are you in the black or are you in the red? Oh, and then so then if you're scared and you are in the red, then that's when you make some changes. Okay. That's when you say, that's I don't need Starbucks. Starbucks. I know. <laughs> that's when you say, I don't need well, Starbucks I guess we today. We will never have Starbucks as a sponsor as this thing grows. Well, but. Good Lord. But, well, they might because. Okay, okay. Hey. We might get some people to buy Starbucks if we get their finances straight. Ooh, that's you can save, maybe, girl. Hey, that's your goal. So you should, it should determine how you want to save or budget your finances. It should say, this is where I want to put more money or this is where I want to spend less. Okay. So you need to put it up. And I, I got a question for you. Okay. Keisha. So before you do that, though, I it's, think you need to create a sheet. Mm-hmm. And that I can be the guinea pig. And then we can give our listeners an update. On me getting in the black. I don't think I'm that far in the red, which I could be because I have not looked like like you said. And, and you but don't I want, know. and I don't know. You're right. I do not know. So it's almost like that HIV test. Take it, baby. If you've been out here doing what you do, you yeah, <laughs> you gotta get an HIV test. Matter of fact, I had one just recently, baby, and I'm all good in the hood. But those type of things when you don't know, it's almost like somebody who know that you you know when you do that with your health. You know, like your yes. body is feeling a certain way, and you don't you know them old folks, baby. They ain't going to the doctor. When they finally go, it take about a week go and they the go, doctor. you know. Black men, can we get y'all to go to the doctor? Mm. Don't be scared. Okay, go back to what Okay, so um, I, I got a sheet already. I, I keep that. You want that? I got you. Yeah, I tripping. got it. What you Why talking you about? I'll forward that to you. But I got a no, question for you. See, is see, let cheap. me tell you something. What? We have always talked about our little, you, we set up a plan on what we're going to talk about. She goes springing some stuff on me. I don't like y'all. Y'all might get to see. Go ahead. I ain't about scared of you, said Akeisha. I'm from the country. <laughs> I ain't scared of you. I haven't seen worse things. Okay, is cheap a dirty word? Because I got hit with that a lot, that I'm cheap. And I, I every time somebody I, say that to me, I like it. Why? They think they're, I think they think it's supposed to hurt my feelings. But I, I'm so I mean, proud you of wear it. like a badge of honor. I do. And that's okay. But I do. I, somebody challenged you, too, because the stuff that you want... You spend some money on it now. Yes. So you but that mean that, I cut you out, that thing on cheap. But excuse me, but that mean I cut out uh, other stuff. And I, I, don't I, I know make now. a way. I make a way. You yeah. were in Cancun with us last year. That's right. <laughs> I was on a Cancun budget. <laughs> and I went with a strict budget. You don't even know. But but I went to Krispy Kreme the other day. See, that's what I'm talking about and, right and there. And I got my now, free you donut. Her, oh, free Hold donut. It was a free donut. But how did you get to the free donut, heart, half five? But you had to buy some dozens because no, I didn't see you no, buy no, some no, dozens. No, no. Keisha, let you me, ain't been... Let me, okay, let's just answer that, then I'm going to let you talk. Okay. You ain't been to Starbucks band do- I mean, um, no, Christmas cream no, no, band no, dozens. No, no. Ago. No, no, it was a promotional they had for reward customers. I'm a reward customer. Oh, so they, how do you become a reward customer? Because that's my, that, I buy it for the children. No, oh, no, I buy it for the children. That's the children the want the Get your life right now. So they, I got a thing in the email saying I get a free cookie donut. Come in. And I go in and I say I just want my one free cookie donut. I get to the a window. Cookie, let's pause. A cookie donut? Oh, it was so good. Oh, my God. But this is the same woman who will go to Silas and get peanut butter bacon milkshake. <laughs> I cannot. It's so good. Okay, so I get it to the window, and the guy said, you are so cheap. You wouldn't buy nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> and I was high-fiving him. You damn right. <laughs> Ain't buying nothing. You said free donut. I'm not buying nothing else. I'm getting my free donut, and I'm out. And that's what I did. I felt good. All right. Well, I'm moving on to education. And I really wanted to talk today about our obligation to our kids, to our students, to our 
nieces and nephews, to the kids at church that sit next to you, to children, period, is to see themselves in the future. We have to help these kids see themselves in the future. How do we do that? Okay. Um, A lot of times, based on our upsets, our disappointments, our inability to take risks, we have, at, at 40 and 50 years old, limited ourselves to the things that we could do. And so we take those same apprehensions and those same issues and we impose them on the children that are around us. And I teach those kids because in conversations with them, I hear them say that. And we have to stop doing that. These are millennials. These jokers can do, you. It's, it's, I mean, it's unreal the type of stuff that they can do and, can, and be involved in. Way beyond what, what we can do in Gen X, way beyond what the baby boomers can do. So we have to help them see themselves in the future because if we don't, history will repeat itself. And they will be sitting around just like us wondering about the things that they could have done. And I hate it when people tell me that all the time. You doing this? You do-. Yeah, because I had a thought. I had an idea just like with this podcast with me and Keisha just coming forth and, and going out, getting the equipment, doing the stuff that we need to do. It is really not that hard. Get behind it. Do it. So help these kids see themselves in the future. So that's what I want us to do this week. I want you, for any kid that is in your life, any kid that you see at the grocery store, any kid that you sit next to church with, any kid that you niece or nephew, Purpose yourself to say to them, hey, what do you want to do with your with your future? Challenge them. Talk to them. Encourage them. And I don't even care if they say, I want to be an NBA star, because you know a lot of boys want that. Then encourage that. Don't say, okay, but you know nobody. I mean, don't, I'm, don't, don't give them no buts. Don't attach nothing negative to it. Don't do any of that. Because here's the bottom line. If I feel and believe in my heart that I can be an NBA player and that's my drive and that's what's helping me graduate high school, that's what's helping me get through college, and then I get to the point where I change or find some other reality to things, then let them have that. Don't kill it before they do it. Because that, if that's the only thing they're thinking about doing right now, and now you're killing that, it's not going to make them create something new. It's going to make them resent you. So please understand that it is our obligation to help this generation, this millennial group, to see themselves in the future. I, I, I mean, it's absolutely our obligation. And the other thing is to expose them to different things. I think that's another reason why they don't think further than... The, the basic things like, you know, you got Dr. Lloyd. We got to expose them to so many different areas so they don't know what they could do unless we expose them to it. So we've got to take this generation that we got coming up under us and show them things. Well, and, and I'm calling everybody on the, on the carpet. And I'm going to call BS if you try to make some excuse on why it can't happen. The bottom line is, mm-hmm. get out here and do it. And here's my last tip. If you have a child that's in high school, Make sure they are taking some type of honors or advanced course and encourage them because if they don't and they get out of here and they go to college or they go to a vocational school and they can't keep up with the work because it's faster paced and they have to do things, it's because they did not take the right prep courses. Get these kids and don't let no counselor, no math teacher, no English teacher tell you that that kid can't take that course because they got a C or they got this. You sign that way. But let me tell you something. My nephew was a C student. I tried to be to be out of him. I tried to yell a be out of him. I tried to reward a be out of him. But guess what? He was a C student. And you, he was the best C student ever. So I said, if you're going to be the best C student, you're going to be the best C student in the honors class and the AP class. And as a result, he graduated high school with a 2.0, a C average. But went on to college, did not have to go to um, Summer Bridge program and he will be graduating on May the 12th with a 3.3 woo, woo, GPA woo, woo, from your alum, Alabama right. State University. So I know it's possible Sting, for Hornet, every Sting. kid. <laughs> and there's so many state colleges in your local area that has tons of vocational um, programs. Northwest Florida here, Pensacola um, State College. I mean, I was just there today. Tons of vocational things. So just get behind these kids and help them to see their future. Everybody's not an A student. Let's nope. get that straight. I was never an A student. Could I be an was. A student? I know, but I was I in honor classes. I, I mean, graduated but valedictorian. You, I know. I got girl. nothing less than A. I, I actually I'm, did not miss a day of school from kindergarten to twelfth grade. Girl, and I what? Yeah, Are never missed a day of school. I didn't. I went to school with strep throat and just 
drank hot tea all day and didn't talk to anybody for three days because I wasn't going to miss school. Oh, no. I, I skipped school to go to the mall. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, mom, I didn't. That was City Keisha. Okay, so we um, one thing we want to challenge you guys this week with us too. Um, when you hear this, when you listen to it, like Keisha said, on your way home, when you when you're at the gym or whatever, we need support. Again. We need more people to like. We need more people to listen. We need more people to respond. So I want share, share, you guys, share. yeah, and share, share with your friends. But I want you on either our Facebook or our Instagram or our Twitter page, all with City Keisha. And um, dot country, country Keisha, dot country Keisha, or city Keisha dash in dash Keisha, um, country Keisha. Um, I want you to, to reply to. Ain't nobody got time for that. Tell us what people don't have time for, because we're really curious to to see that. And we might put that little segment in our next one um, and quote some people for stuff that you feel like ain't nobody got time for that. I ain't got time to make no salad. Oh Lord. Did you say I'll toss buy. your salad? What? No, I don't have time to make it. Oh, okay. I buy it, but I ain't gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Till next time. From the outhouse to the penthouse. To the penthouse. Oh God, let's try this again, <laughs> Katakisha. From the outhouse to the penthouse. All right, we out. <laughs>